And because we're a school for visually impaired children, we were thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could incorporate in the wall therapeutic and educational value as well. So it did more than just honor our donors, it also functioned as a tool that our teachers and our therapists could use every day with the kids. And we met with um, Scribe and Elisa Ross. Uh, they were uh, mutual friends. We have mutual friends. So we got in touch with them. And <clears throat> I was obviously aware of Scribe's work at Children's Mercy. And they were very excited to collaborate together on the project and also to work with us. Um, in, and they had certain challenges because a child with a visual impairment um, doesn't mean necessarily that the child has no vision. Sometimes the child will be, have light perception. Sometimes the child will have some vision. They could read something really, really close up or appreciate contrasting colors. So some of the things that we worked with specifically on this wall and with the artists was using um, very contrasting colors very contrasting shapes, a lot of delineation, and then texture. Texture is really important, again, for a visually impaired child. Um, if you can imagine not being able to look up into the night sky and see the moon, you're not going to know what the shape of the moon, moon is. So you need to be able to have something that you can visually touch to appreciate what does round mean? What is the shape of a butterfly or a moth? Or what's the shape of a star? And in working with the artists, they really got those concepts. I mean, the obvious challenge with a project like this is trying to look at something from a perspective that you might take for granted. Um, the, the idea of being able to get a message across um, to somebody who um, may not have memory of like what that picture is um, was really scary to, to both of us. So we, we spent a lot of time like looking at simple shapes when we met with them. Um, they put goggles on us and show us, showed us different varied um, kinds of sight that they, that they deal with and the different challenges. It's very tactfully, tactually um, attractive. We want um, our children to explore their environment and oftentimes they will have a reluctance to do so because they can't see it. And that's, that's natural, but we have to encourage that sort of sense of adventure and that willingness to figure out, you know, their world around them. And so again, having this sort of variety of different substrates where it feels like the bark on a tree, or you get these different kinds of materials, some that almost feel like leather, some that feel like silk, um, the little plastic wings on the fireflies that are here on the mural. Again, those are all opportunities for the children to, to improve their sense of touch and also to explore um, the environment around them um, in a way that they feel comfortable and excited about. But that's different than the uh, shape of the star, right? Just like God. Arion, what's the shape of the, can you find a star for me? There you go. Found it. You found it. Uh, Arion, count the points. Can you count the points of the star? One, one two, three, Four, five, six. Oh, let's 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 back up. Let's start from the. Where's the top of the star? Can you find the top of the star for me? Okay. There you go. Okay. Now I want you to go around the star. How many points? One. CEI is um, in its 62nd year of, or actually 61st year of uh, providing services to visually impaired children here in Kansas City. In the course of the year, we'll provide services to about 400 children in about a 150 mile radius of greater Kansas City. And our mission is to prepare children with visual impairments and other disabilities to achieve at their highest level. The beak is in there, so one, it's accessible to the kids' hands, but two, um, let's say if it was blurry, I kind of imagined how colors would blur together and by creating that the, the right amount of simplicity and the right amount of um, distance from each other that it might still translate as a face to somebody. Um, and then you combine the texture with it um, for kids who, who see or, or, or don't see um, anything and experience it on a, a totally different level. One of the things that we really strive to do here at CCBI is to bring our kids into the world. And we take them to petting zoos and so that they can interact with animals. Because again, if you're at the zoo and you can't see a zebra, 
or you can't see a goat at the little petting farm, um, you need to be able to get up close to it so you know what it feels like, you know how big it is, you know what it smells like, you know what, whether it's got a wet tongue, whether it has a distinct nose and ears or a tail, whether it's four legs or two. Again, those are all tactile experiences that the kids need to have. So this wall helps with those aspects. One other cool feature that I wanted to point out is that the artists, again, were so thoughtful that they did some examples of constellations here in the wall. So here you can see where they inlaid these great stones to create the Big Dipper. So again, you think about a child who's visually impaired who may have some vision or have no vision at all, they're not going to have the ability to go out on a clear night with mom and dad and have them point out what the Big Dipper is. But our teachers and our therapists can work with the child and perhaps it's in the course of some story that they're reading to understand stars, the night sky, constellations, the Big Dipper. I just love seeing joy. It's a whole lot like the working at Children's Mercy is that um, you always hope and pray when you start a project that it'll um, do its job and that's to communicate with them on their level to um, make joy. Hi. Hi.